UN investigators on Wednesday said they had uncovered systematic abuses against migrants in Libya. The head of the group said consistent patterns of human rights abuses were widespread in government detention centers and trafficking hubs. The fact-finding mission uncovered additional evidence pointing to the systematic and widespread perpetration of human rights violations against detainees in Libya. We have reasonable grounds to believe that some additional incidents of abuse against detainees during the armed conflict between 2019 and 2020 may constitute war crimes. Germany on Wednesday said it would stop training Libya's Coast Guard over concerns about its treatment of migrants. The German government cannot currently justify the training of the Libyan Coast Guard by German soldiers in view of the repeated unacceptable behavior by individual units of the Libyan Coast Guard toward refugees and migrants and also toward non-governmental organizations. Hundreds of thousands of migrants hoping to reach Europe have made their way in recent years through Libya, where lucrative trafficking and smuggling business has flourished. EU countries are funding Libya's security forces to intercept migrants looking to cross to Europe. And we can Augustin Egravon has resigned from his position as Nigeria's national football team coach. Egravon's resignation comes just three months after he took over from Genot Roy and is a direct fallout of the Super Eagles' failure to qualify for the 2022 FIFA World Cup in Qatar. Needing a win to beat Ghana to the ticket, Nigeria were only able to play for a 1-1 draw at the MKO Abiola Stadium in Abuja. Meanwhile, the Nigerian football coach is not the only one that has relieved himself of his coaching duties. Carlos Querez left his role as Egypt's coach after the Pharaohs also missed out on a place at the World Cup Finals in Qatar on Tuesday. Egypt lost yet again to Senegal on penalties. The 69-year-old Queros posted a goodbye message to Egypt players and staff on social media shortly after the defeat. Football evening, and I wish uh, all the best for Senegal during the World 25-year-old Martin Senkubuge spends much of his time locked in this small room. He has turned the room into an art studio on the outskirts of the Ugandan capital, Kampala. Many of his portraits feature people with the skin condition vitiligo. My first piece, wow, it was so special to me. It's called Vitiligo King. And uh, Vitiligo King is right here. It shows how someone like him, because the news himself, he has a story. How he has been out there with his body not covered. Senku Bouguet learned about the disease while studying for his art degree. That first class degree is now being used to educate people. Now, a new movement in the capital Kampala is raising awareness of the condition. The main focus wasn't the public at the start. The main focus was the people themselves. Because I wanted them to understand that we can make a change. They are, they are sorrowful inside. Most of them, some of them have not moved out of their rooms. Some of them had never moved, looked at themselves in the mirror. You know, there's one guy who had never looked at himself in the mirror for 23 years. He's a father. He has a very beautiful young daughter, you know, but not looking at himself. Why? Because of what he has been told. It is particularly noticeable in dark-skinned or black people. And in Uganda, the stigma of having vitiligo has driven many to hide away and shun society. We offer support to those groups uh, where members meet and then they cancel each other. Because when I share my story, there, you know there is power in sharing. You feel like a burden has lifted, especially when you're sharing with someone that has gone through the same experience with you. Vitiligo is an autoimmune disorder which is clinically characterized by the development of white patches which are caused by a lack of melanocyte.